Hello and welcome to Travel John's podcast. We are two traveling Indians, Huma and Sudhi. In this podcast series, we bring to you destination insights and interesting stories relevant for Indian travelers. We have been traveling for last 15 years, have been to almost all states in India and to as many as 30 plus countries around the world. We hope that listening to our experience will help you plan better and travel more. In today's episode, we'll talk about the scenic road trips within India. One way we can still enjoy travels during these restrictive and lockdown periods. 2020 hasn't been easy for most of us. Travel industry has taken a big hit and people are still scared to travel. Though most travel lovers would really want to get out, feel the wind in their hair, sun on their face, sand under their feet, and the aromas of nature in their nostrils there's so much that each one of us would want to do when the times change isn't it but till then is there a way to make the best out of what there is how about road trips let me talk to sudeep about this so sudeep tell our listeners how feasible and realistic are road trips today well road trips today are the safest in a way you travel with your own secure bio bubble you cover a distance at your own pace and comfort a destination of your own choice uh, of your own will and endurance on on driving be it cars or be it uh, bikes today most roads across the country are in very good conditions and uh, with less traffic on the roads and a heightened sense of hygiene across the country thanks to covid makes stopovers and pit stops very safe so i would probably take a wager and say that this is the best time to go for road trips in india so you're saying road trips are safe uh, in that case where should one go now road trips are a destination in themselves so it's not about the end point of reaching somewhere but the whole journey india is a land of perhaps more than 100 hill stations 100 beaches thousands of homestays sites of pilgrimage uh, adventure and what not so there are so many places that one could go to in india on road trip but having said that i think there are certain journeys in many parts of our country which in totality are a huge uh, draw for road trips and i think almost certainly everyone has their own top 10 road trips and i think almost certainly everybody is right in saying so So you would have your own top ten list like mine. Uh, which one is your top most, Sadi? Uh, I have a top seven because I couldn't compare uh, any more in India. Those reflected the same majesty as my top seven. The top most on my list is a seventy kilometer stretch right at the India-Tibet border in Arunachal Pradesh, and it is between a place called Zimitang and Tawang. Zimitang is almost at the border with Tibet. Uh, in fact, it was the site of one of the first clashes during the Sino-Indian War in 1962, uh, Khinzi Man in Zimitang. That place now has an impressive monastery, an amazing scenery of the eastern Himalayas rising up, waterfalls, uh, forests, and narrow winding roads. The roads from there in Zimitang wind up the mountains into a monastery also called the Tatsang monastery uh, it's a blissful drive covered in mist dense uh, rhododendron forests uh, red uh, purple the kind of colors you would want uh, and hairpin bends uncover amazing landscapes at every turn as you drive up beyond the Tatsang onto the Bumla Tawang road the landscape completely changes to ice and snow as far as one could see and no human in sight for miles and miles as it's an armed forces area in fact uh, the day we were driving down from there it started uh, snowing and within 10 minutes it became a thick blanket of white as far as one could see and this was the scenario this, this was the scene till we reached the tri junction where a solitary armed forces canteen welcomes you to piping hot coffee in that uh, cold these 2 to 2 and a half hours that i spent on the road uh, traveling from zimitang to tawang are still etched very strong in my memory and i think that's the best that i've seen in india that's 
quite a different one. Zimitang may not be in everyone's list, though it sounded mesmerizing when you spoke. The history, the scenic beauty and the feel of the tribe. What are your other ones? Uh, number two in my list is uh, the drive from, uh, actually it's in Ladakh, the drive from Changla Pass to Durbok on the way to Pangong. Uh, not exactly Durbong, but say Tangste Manasri. Uh, that's roughly around uh, 60 odd kilometers uh, because of the, uh, the, the roads and the conditions it takes around two odd hours to get there. Uh, and what happens is you drive through a, a plateau called the Changthang Cold Desert. Now, Changthang is one of the largest uh, deserts in the in, in the world, cold desert, and almost I think it's the highest desert in the in in, in the world. Uh, a part of eastern Ladakh falls under Changthang, and that that brings in amazing amount of changing landscapes. You find swamps, you find desert sand, you find some streams. You find exotic flowers, you find the, the Tibetan wild ass, you find nomads and uh, it's a journey which is which is amazing. Uh, you, you, you are in sometimes passing through the Durbok stream with uh, you know grasses and grassland around just to see or catch uh, sand uh, at the far end of the, of the stream then going on and on till you can't see any further. It's something to be to be to be felt and anybody who goes to Pangong probably goes dreamy-eyed towards Pangong but the the drive from Changla to Durbok actually is mind-boggling and it's on my number two. Number three on my list is far down in the south. Uh, it's from Bandipur in Karnataka through the forests of Bandipur and Masinagodi till they reach Uti. I would say it's one of the most beautiful jungle trails that I have ever seen complete with animal crossings, impeccable greenery with blooming gulmohars and impressive nilgiris in the background. It's a roughly 70 odd kilometer drive that perhaps takes an hour, hour and a half and uh, drivers down south basically call this as 36 hairpin bends to paradise, this route. Uh, on you, you, you start from Bandipur in Karnataka, uh, you cross over a, the border crossing between two states at Masina Gudi. If you are too tired, you can just settle down into one of those amazing and many resorts and homestays in Masina Gudi from where you can watch the foothills uh, of Nilgiris and then you can do your slow and steady climb to beautiful Uti. That's number three on my list. Number four on my list is uh, a journey uh, which one would uh, find if one was trying to drive from Kedarnath to Joshimat. It actually is a section between Okimat and uh, Tungnath on the way to Chamoli. Uh, roughly 40 kilometers an hour, but what beauty. From Okimat as you drive towards Chamoli with uh, Chopta and Tungnath on the way, uh, the, the, the grandeur of Himalaya and with uh, the Alaknanda uh, pass you uh, every now and then, it is just heavenly. Uh, so green, so fresh and so huge a landscape that you will really think that God somewhere resides in those areas. Number five on my list is uh, the route between Manali and Kullu, but not the usual route that people take and drive up to, but the route through Nagar. So if you, if you are starting from Manali and going to Kullu, you take uh, the left bank on the river Bias and go through Nagar. Nagar used to be the capital of the medieval kingdom uh, of Kullu and uh, has the, the, the famous and intricately carved Nagar castle as one stop and also the, the glorious, expansive and art-rich, rich estate uh, on that same road. The same road has uh, a, a good view of bears flowing down and you have the, the, the mountains on both sides uh, and the huge Manali valley that one comes to see. It's a short drive, 40 kilometers, perhaps an hour, but uh, that's that's a drive that, that leaves you filled up with amazing amount of positive energy and you feel so relaxed and calm. Uh, going, going ahead, number six on my list is a short drive of around two hours between Binsar and the temple town of Jageshwar. In fact, town might be a misnomer. Jageshwar is probably a collection of 30 odd houses. This drive again from Binsar uh, takes you almost near Almora before which, after which it just takes a turn and goes into the beautiful Jageshwar 
amazing forests very dense very cold uh, nice amazing breeze uh, greenery everywhere and you find those 9th century old stone temples just made out of pure stones assembled one on top of the other as across the road you see from here and there uh, jageshwar to bensar is thus my number 6 Number seven and the last one on my list is the coastal stretch uh, at NH66 from Udupi to Goa. That stretches from Udupi to Murdeshwar, Kumta, Gokarna, Karwar, and thereof to southern Goa of Kanakana, and then uh, winds up somewhere near Warka. Uh, around uh, 320 odd kilometers, the longest by far on the drive that I have seen, roughly takes seven hours. but it's like uh, our own equivalent to the great ocean road that you find in australia uh it's it, thanks to the golden quadrilateral and the development uh, that's why this coastal road is very scenic to drive uh, very well laid out and uh, always uh, clean in terms of traffic and or 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 a lot of people going around uh you have to experience this one to believe it so that winds up uh, my top 7 Uh, road trips that i really really like in india yeah that was awesome very different from the top 10s one would usually find on the net and i can recall each one of these however sudeep i think we should also talk about the road trips which are more feasible as far as the distances from the major cities are concerned road trips which can be taken over a weekend say say from delhi bangalore mumbai what do you say oh yes Delhi and Bangalore are blessed in the sense that they are inland and have many more options than say Mumbai, Chennai, and Kolkata. Uh, here are my top of the mind recall road trips. If I would say, if you are in Delhi, Corbett, Hanital is one. Uh, the Golden Triangle of Jaipur, Agra, back to Delhi is another one. The drive up to Rishikesh, Haridwar is another one. Or one could go slightly up north into Shimla through Chandigarh. as well as uh, the western routes into dehradun and masuri if you are in mumbai then the stretch from lonavala to pune to mulchi is one one could drive down for a longer trip to goa another one is uh, to the hill stations of egatpuri and nasik or you could do the longer stretch of pune khandala then vai and mahabaleshwar bangalore as i said has a lot many more options one could do the bandipur uti uh, trip that i talked about or you could go to the the kabini kurg stretch or you could go to the hill station town of chikmagalur and mulyangiri or you could drive up north into the historic ruins of hampi or you could drive down towards the east cross into kerala and go to wynad and vaithuri districts these are some of the many that one could do from bangalore if you are in chennai from a weekend drive i think you probably have pondicherry and mahabalipuram as the most uh, obvious places to go to if not uh, bangalore the hill stations of uti and kodaikanal are i think perhaps a longer drive for people who are in chennai how does that sound wow that inspires me to plan our next road trip as soon as possible before i get on to that sudeep would you like to give some tips to our listeners on planning a road trip uh, my pleasure everybody has a top 10 i think and we should respect that This is how we are all same and different. So, if this has helped you think about our next trip, uh, here are a few things that comes to my mind. Number one, understand how much you are comfortable driving or riding each day, and hence what should be your destination and for how long. Some people are very comfortable driving long hours. Some people probably require a break every three, four hours. So, a trip decides itself basis your comfort. And so, number two is that basis your comfort. Break your road trip down into comfortable chunks. For example, for me, a Bangalore to Goa drive, which is roughly 550 kilometers, is a two-day one-side experience. Ensure that your number three. Ensure that your your car or your bike is well serviced before a long drive, or a drive through a difficult terrain. Number four, pack well for the road. I am talking from a car's perspective, but things like pillows for a nap, a food basket, easy to pick up a camera for a quick click, enough water bottle in all compartments. your fast tags recharged shades sanitizers wallet keep them handy pack them well uh one uh, one rule that i follow when i it's comfortable with you this is number 5 for me is that 
drive only between sunrise and sunset. You drive a natural light provides you a better judgment of the road and objects and also ensures that you get enough rest between one day and the other in case you're planning longer drives. Number six uh, in my mind uh, is that while navigating routes, one trusts Google or sometimes maybe Apple Maps, but also back it up with prior research and a friendly check with people on the road. My, my common practice is to make an Excel sheet for a day each of my travel and I plan to sort of I just jot down where am I going to eat what is going to be my driving route where am I going to stay how long is the drive and how much time it will take and hence that what time should I leave a hotel or what time should I reach it just helps me plan and be more comfortable lastly my number seven it's a bit uh, it's a bit subjective but uh, I think for a car if comfortable drive with windows rolled up uh, and maybe the AC on automatic it uh, tires you down less you get lesser dirt lesser sound lesser wind drag also keeps the car clean and keeps the ambience uh, same irrespective of if it's busy outside or serene outside uh, while you enjoy the wind I think uh, this helps the body at least uh, adapt uh, easier and lot lesser to the change outside if you're riding bikes ensure your gear is safe and comfortable apart from that i think there is nothing much that uh, i would say it's just that you start to drive and enjoy what nature has given us uh, though i wouldn't agree to your last point i personally don't like to travel within closed ac cars i would prefer to breathe fresh air when on hills and in jungles than sit behind closed windows However, of course, it's left to a person's choice. We'll end here for today, Sudeep. Thank you for sharing your experience and thanks a lot to our listeners. We shall get back to you soon with a new travel episode. In the meantime, you may write to us if you have any query related to travel planning. We would be more than happy to help you. Our mail ID is traveljohns1 at gmail.com or you can write to us at contact at traveljohns.in. That's all for today, guys. Happy traveling. Happy traveling.